All right, today we have a new battery from Ruxu. Let's open it up. All right, and there's the battery. So this is their 48 volt, 30 amp hour battery that is made for golf carts. So that is a very nice design. I like the case. You can tell this has got some screws here that hold the case together. Uh, that's gonna make it really easy for us to open up and take a look on the inside. Looks like we've got some communication ports here. Uh, this is probably so the batteries can be linked together. And I think we have an accessory for that as well, which is a power meter. So let's take a look. Yeah, so we've got this meter and this cabling that plugs into one of these ports here that gives us information on the battery, state of charge, voltage, things like that. And they also packaged in a charger. So we have their charging unit as well. All right, well, let's turn this battery on. I believe this is the switch here, yeah. I saw some lights here. Okay, there we go, we got a green light. Guess that means it's ready to go. Let's check and see if we've got voltage. And there we go, we got 52.68 volts. All right, and there's their little fuel gauge thing here. <laughs> Very neat. So I'm just showing 50% stated charge, shows our voltage and uh, shows our amperage, nothing right now because we don't have anything hooked up. All right, so let's go ahead and start charging this guy. All right, so I got the charger plugged in and the charging cable portion hooked up to the battery. We just need to connect these two together here and I think we should start. Yep, heard the charger come on. Let's take a look at our screen. Here it is. We are showing 16 amps going into the battery. All right, so I'm just gonna leave that thing to do what it's supposed to and I'll be back. All right, so the battery is 100% charged. And now we can do a capacity test. I've got the shunt hooked up. I've got an inverter hooked up. And then as the load, I'm gonna use this crypto miner that I have this GPU crypto mining system because if I'm gonna be burning off electricity, I might as well be getting paid for it, right? And before we start the test, let's take a look at the specs of this battery. I downloaded the manual and it is a 30 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Our max continuous charging current is 30 amps. Our standard charging current is 10 amps. Our maximum continuous discharge current is 60 amps. And we can do a peak discharge for 30 seconds at 65 amps. And we can do the maximum peak discharge at 10 seconds for 100 amps. And you can parallel 10 of these together. You cannot series these because that would be too high of a voltage for this kind of battery. All right. So let's go ahead and turn on our breaker. And then let's turn the inverter on. Okay. And our GPU miner has started. And it's gonna take it in a minute to fully boot up and start mining. All right, so there we go. We're doing 520 watts. We can see our meter is showing 
about 9.9 amps being drawn out and the shunt is showing about 10 amps so about the same there all right so we'll just let that thing run and I'll be back when it's complete all right so we're still going we are down to four percent left and uh, right around five percent or maybe after five percent uh, this screen shows this so this is basically saying yeah the battery is really low <laughs> you probably want to get your cart back to a place to charge uh, that would be my guess on that <laughs> Uh, but we are still going. Oh, actually it shut down. Yeah, so we shut down just shy of pulling the full capacity. So like we were just under the four, we were just under 4% left. I'm going to hook a charger up to it to see if we can wake it back up. That way we can see where we were at before it shut down. Okay, there we go. Now we are back. If we can. All right. Yep, yeah, so we were at 4%. We had 1.2 amp hours left to go so we were able to pull 28.8 amp hours all right guys so we're going to give this better another shot at the capacity test uh, this time we'll use the a torch load tester and i've got the battery fully charged back up to 100 percent so let's go ahead and start the test Okay, so we're pulling 126 watts. We could probably turn that up a little bit. All right, so we'll pull 132, 2.5 amps. We'll just uh, let that continue on and I'll be back when it's done. All right guys, so the test has completed and we have 27.981 amp hours, 1,441.2 watt hours. So yeah, we still did not meet the full rated advertised capacity on this battery. All right guys, so I got the bolts all loosened up on this battery, so now we can take the top off, I think. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. There we go. All right. Now that is a massive BMS that is sitting on top here. <laughs> huge. I think we do have prismatic cells. I wonder if we can take this BMS portion off okay looks like this plate here is lifting off and there we go we do have prismatic cells there is let's see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, just as we would expect. And these actually look a lot like those top band cells. Yeah, so these are the ones I'm talking about. These look a lot like these look a lot like these top band cells. See if you look at the tops of them there. And then the tops of these 
look very similar. Uh, but the build quality is fantastic. There's this kind of plexiglass kind of cover that's separating these two pieces. That's nice. I wonder if this just comes up. There we go. All right, so I want to check and see what the voltages of the cells are. I want to see if there's a reason why it's shutting down early. This first cell is 2.66, so that is pretty low. The one next to it, 3.1, 3.1, 3.1, 3.1. Three point one, three 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 point one, and three point one, and three point one. So they're all 3.1 except for this one up here at the front. This one is 2.6. So this one, this one's the one that's probably making our pack shut down sooner than it should. So it really kind of makes me wonder if it's a balance issue, like maybe this is not fully balanced. All right, guys, so I charged the battery back up to 100%. And while I was charging, as it got close to 100%, I was checking the voltages on the cells, and this cell that was lower than the rest of them when the charge was all the way down was still lagging behind. The other ones were closer to 3.5, 3.6, and this one was like around, uh, around 3.4, maybe less. So I'm gonna see if I can plug it back in and get it to start charging again to see if I can show you what I'm talking about. There we go. So let's check this voltage. So we got 3.39 and the one above it is 3.43. But I think it's gonna get a wider spread as we let it charge. We're at 3.43 on the first cell. And this one's already at 3.52. So yeah, we're, this cell is definitely behind. We got three, well the charging just shut off again. We got 3.37, 3.44. Yeah, so I think, I think it's a, it's a balance problem is what we're dealing with here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook up this active balance here and let it balance the battery and then we'll do another discharge test. All right guys, so the balance has been running for several hours and I was keeping an eye on this cell. It was still taking quite, a, quite some time for this one to come up. So to save time, I went ahead and just hooked up my hobby charger and hook and set it on one S so I could just charge this one cell. I just hooked up alligator clips right here. And I ended up putting in about 1.6 amp hours. So now after topping this cell off with the charger and letting the balancer run uh, for a while, I think we are pretty nice and balanced. So let's take a look. 
Double check these. 342. 342. Yeah, so everything is at 342. So I think we are nice and balanced. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this battery back together and then we'll do one final capacity test and we'll see where we're at with this battery. All right, batteries back together. Uh, we are 100% on the meter. We should be real nice and balanced on all the cells now. So let's go ahead and start the test. There we go. Pulling 138 watts. We'll just let that do its thing and I'll be back when it's done. All right, guys, so check it out. This time we got exactly 30 amp hours. <laughs> so well, we got 30.084. <laughs> so we finally passed the capacity test. Now, however, it did take us doing some work to the battery that normal people wouldn't be doing. Uh, so you got to consider that part of it. <laughs> which is really a good reason why if you're going to buy lithium batteries it's a good idea to have some kind of tester like this um, this one seems pretty fine it's pretty cheap there's actually a model that's prior to this i think a little older than this one that's easier to use and i think it's even cheaper i kind of like the older one better to be honest with you um, but I'll throw some links in the description for these guys. It, it's real handy to have something that you can actually test the batteries to know if you're getting the right thing or if maybe there's a problem with the battery that you got. Because uh, otherwise, how would you know? All right, so I totally almost forgot to test low temperature protection. I just tested it. It does work. Uh, but let me go ahead and shoot it again here. I think I had to freeze up two of these. There it goes. Yeah, so I got like a real quick alarm here and then it shut down charging. So let's see if we can turn charging back on. All right, there you go. Now charging's coming back on. Yep, so the low temp does work. All right, guys, so I think that's going to be it for the video. I'll leave links down in the description. As always, let me know what you think down there in the comments, or is it over here now? I think they moved it. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you on the next one. <laughs>